So thank you all for coming and registering. We're excited to have you all here. And we had to turn people away for this event. So we're excited that you guys are here. Some of you have been to multiple Aging 2.0 events. Others, this is your first time. So we're going to just very quickly tell you a little bit about Aging 2.0 so you know what event you're at. And then if you want to learn more, we're happy to tell you more during the breaks. Um, my name is Katie Fike. This is Stephen Johnston, and we're the co-founders of Aging 2.0. Stephen runs most of our East Coast events in um, New York, Boston, D.C. primarily. And then we also come together to do events and other programs. Um, I run Innovate 50 also, which is a consulting firm that does innovation in this space. Um, Stephen does Ford Castle, which is more around mobile health consulting. But really, we have a range of backgrounds. I'm a PhD gerontologist with kind of a business background. Stephen's more from the MBA business side and mobile health side. And we are both really passionate about innovation in the aging space and also trying to understand why there hasn't been more considering the demographics that we're all very familiar with. So first we wanted to thank our host, IDEO, for this great space and <laughs> very cool. We're not foolish enough to think that it wasn't partly that that helped with the sellout of the event. Um, but they're a great host. They've been very supportive of what we're doing, especially Gretchen Addy, who will be speaking momentarily. And so the agenda for tonight, quick welcome. Gretchen's going to speak a little bit about some of what IDEO is doing, specifically in the aging space. Then we have Stephanie Palmieri from Soft Tech VC, who's going to give us her perspective as an investor who's watching this space and interested in the space. Then Lively will present. They're one of the, the first startup for tonight. And that's David Glickman. And Iggy actually couldn't make it now tonight, but David will talk with us. And then we'll take a quick networking break for about 30 minutes. We'll come back. I'll have a little word from our sponsors. And then the final four startups will give their presentations. So just quickly about Aging 2.0. Um, it really started with this mission and mindset around accelerating innovation in the aging space. And we wanted to create this global innovation network to really connect, educate, and support entrepreneurs and innovators in this space. And really this, you know, the 2.0 name is really around kind of this mindset shift from a challenge to make thinking about it as an opportunity from thinking about aging as synonymous with healthcare to instead thinking about aging as an entire life stage. We have 30 new years of you know, extended life stage to think about beyond health, to go to think about lifestyle and prevention and wellness. Um, it's about de designing for all with good design. It's about the aging community has traditionally been kind of mission driven and more focused on government and nonprofits. And we're really excited about bringing in for profit and entrepreneurship into the aging space, which we think has exciting potential. So we've been at this now just a little over a year. We've done 19 events in eight cities, um, including two in the UK. And we have this kind of growing momentum and this growing kind of wave and roar of people who are in this space. And it's been really exciting to meet hundreds of startups now around the country and around the world. And as we've been meeting startups, we've really kind of bottoms up, um, grouped them into these four categories where we're seeing emerging opportunity areas in the space. Um, connected independence is kind of this combination of aging in place products and services, but also things that connect people to their community. So it's not just about aging in place by yourself in your home, but it's about staying connected to your entire community, which is what people want. Empowered care, we're seeing products and services that help either family caregivers or professional caregivers do their job more effectively. So some of this is back-end operational, other stuff are tools to help caregivers manage the tasks. We're also seeing this ageless style, we're calling it, but this is really kind of Durable Medical Equipment 2.0. We joke that this area is the battle against big Bayesian boring, which is currently a lot of the products that older adults have to choose from. So this is really infusing style and function. And it's to take it away from need to more want-based products and to make people feel better about the products that they might need to buy. And then finally, there's this lifelong wellness category. And this is really, as you know, there's a ton going on in health right now, a ton going on around chronic disease management. But we feel that there's some really particular issues of later life health that are kind of missed by this broader discussion just about chronic disease. So these are things like cognitive decline, sexy topics like incontinence, um, falls, you know, there's this area of things that are kind of being missed and we think they're really important in big quality of life issues and also big cost centers. So we've talked about these opportunity areas, but what we have also seen are there's common barriers that entrepreneurs in this space are facing. And so Everything from access to consumers for consumer insights. There's tricky marketing challenges in this space. You know, there's lots of potholes and ways you can do it wrong. Um, distribution is probably the biggest challenge that every startup we talk to faces about how do you distribute through long-term care? How do you distribute direct to an older consumer? These are all challenges that the startups are facing. Um, acquiring talent, you know, we're actually building this network and finding increasingly impressive talent coming into this space, but it's still hard to grow and scale a team in this space. And then finally funding, you know, we kind of say jokingly that we feel like a lot of the startups we talk to are 
going up and down Sand Hill Road looking for the one VC whose grandmother had Alzheimer's disease. And that's, <laughs> that's not a very effective way to raise funding. And so we think we can help kind of aggregate and figure out who are the investors who are interested in this space. And if we can do that at a macro level, it'll make it easier for each of you guys to connect with the people who want to find you. So we're just kind of trying to match make and help you all find each other. So Stephen makes fun of me for this slide. But um, you know, I think what we're trying to add with Aging 2.0 is you know, on one side we have entrepreneurs and designers and investors and kind of the for-profit world. And then on the other side we have, you know, long-term care providers and nonprofits and seniors themselves. And there really hasn't been a forum for these two groups to come together, but they really need each other. You know, the entrepreneurs need to understand what problems to solve. And in a lot of cases, the long-term care organizations need new innovative ideas to deal with the challenges in their business. So we're trying to bridge this gap and create venues for people to meet each other. And so one of the ways we try to do that is these types of events. And so when our events were smaller, we used to go around and have everyone introduce themselves. But now we have to do it more efficiently and let you mingle more during the um, breaks. But what I want to talk about here is, you know, I think to run and you know, launch a great business in this space, you really need to under have understanding in these three buckets. You know, you really need to understand the user and who you're designing for. You need to build something great, you know, technology or industrial design. And then you need to launch a business that has a viable model. And so I think tonight is about helping people find people in the bucket you're not in and try to you know, get someone else excited about what you're building. So we're just going to do a show of hands. Um, who in this room is nonprofit, works at a nonprofit? And you can raise your hand for multiple things. So look around, because you might, if you were looking to meet nonprofit people, see who has their hands up. OK, nonprofit people. What about government? Anybody here from government? OK, we need more government. <laughs> um, um, aging services. So who's currently in an aging services role? Great, it's a couple hands in the back. Um, who, what about who's over 50 themselves? Fantastic. <laughs> um, what about from academia? Anybody here from the academia? Great. Um, so what about developers, front-end or back-end engineers? A few hands. Great. Um, what about entrepreneurs who would consider themselves an entrepreneur? Excellent. Um, what about some people from like, kind of traditional healthcare or long-term care? OK, what about investors? They're always a little shy to put their hand up. <laughs> Approach gently, folks. Um, what about from kind of a bigger tech company or big company in the space, a big corporation? Who would say I work for a corporation? All right, lots of small guys. Great. So that's you know, one aspect of diversity that we hope to have here tonight. An exciting thing about tonight is we actually have a lot of geographic diversity tonight. Um, and so of our presenters, actually two of the teams are from LA, one is from Nashville, one is from India. Kabir here at, from India. So I just wanted to kind of get a sense who is not within driving distance of where we are right now. Great. So there's you know, 10 or 15 people who flew in, and we think that you know, this is a great opportunity to meet people in other markets who might be great options for you to spread your business. So what are we doing? So we've been doing these 18 events, 19 events over the last year. And you know, we're trying to think about what's really needed, what have we learned, and what does this space need? And so we're continuing to do the global tour in these events. Um, we've started to get inquiries from chapters that want to start in Milan and China and Singapore. And so we're kind of looking to kind of chapter do, do a chapter model. We're going to start doing more challenges and hackathons. I think that's an important thing for this space um, to make it more of a pull, to let the big providers in the space say, this is my problem. And if people solve it, there's a market for it. So we have some challenges lined up and some hackathons and alarms. Um, and then the final thing is we're working on, we're in active discussions right now about setting up an accelerator in this space. And so, you know, we know that there are challenges that are on both the entrepreneur's side as well as long-term care providers. And so we're looking to build this kind of ecosystem to really programmatically support select startups in the space and really try to give them wings. So some of the upcoming events, we have quite a few. Um, tomorrow, there's this event at Age Song. I hope you guys can join us. There's flyers in the back. It's a nearby assisted living. And we're taking over. They have an attached cafe. And so we're taking it over. We're doing a site visit and co-working day. So anybody who wants to come and kind of extend the networking, I was telling a lot of entrepreneurs who are here in town of, you need to meet so-and-so and you need to meet so-and-so. And instead of everybody meeting at five different Starbucks, I'm like, let's just all park it at one place and we can all meet with each other. So hope you can join us. Um, we also have events coming up in New York, London. The Hackathon will be announcing um, and other things. If you're on our newsletter, we can kind of give details about these as they come along. Here's the event about at Age Song. There's flyers at the back. And we'll go ahead and get into the speakers now. Um, so Gretchen is going to come up and tell us a little bit about what they're working on, and then Stephanie, and then we'll go to Lively.